That's right. The Joplin Police Department tells me they're working with the FBI and ATF on this case to try to find the man or men responsible for attempting to burn down this Planned Parenthood here in Joplin. Now, the website that Keegan and his friends are using is called GoFundMe.com, and viewers to the site can just view this video and then click on this button if they want to donate. Again, the experts tell us to avoid shoddy work like this to make sure to always get references and at least get two bids before letting any stranger into your home. A man was caught red handed with 52 Molotov cocktails and a map marking out 48 churches in Miami, Oklahoma. Now I'm standing in what used to be the heart of the city of Trees, Kansas. Just behind me is where the old post office used to be. But since the state has come in and ripped down the town and ripped up the streets, preparing it for a new purpose. This video shows the first arson attempt of the Joplin Moss last summer. Of course, we were very concerned that anyone would have this hate and have any kind of violence in our community. While watching media coverage of the attempted arsons on Joplin's Planned Parenthood building earlier this month, Kimberly Kester couldn't help but see similarities to the arson of the Joplin Moss that brought the community and building to its knees last August. You know, we were texting, we were on Facebook. Wow, that looks just like the you know the method that was used on the videos from the person who tried to burn the mosque. In both cases, a lone man ran up to the building and threw a backpack full of accelerants onto the roof of the buildings. Authorities matched a print from the scene of the Planned Parenthood arson to one Jedediah Stout of Joplin. Stout later confessed to burning down the Joplin mosque as well. Hopefully that is closure. Uh, it you know, sometimes it does take time to solve these cases. Now, Kester tells me that the Islamic Society of Joplin hasn't just been waiting for punishment for the person who burned down their mosque over a year ago, but that it does make them feel a lot more secure knowing someone finally confessed. Islam teaches us that we have to forgive and that God is the person or the being that's in charge of meting out any kind of judgment. The Islamic Society of Joplin says the confession won't bring back its mosque, but that a confession helps close a chapter. And right now it remains focused on moving on and rebuilding their mosque off of 32nd Street in Joplin. I've seen tornadoes before, but I've never been before. When Larry Davis stepped out of his safe room, he was confronted with turned over semis and his son's diesel business in shambles. He says the damage was pretty shocking. Your disbelief, I guess, is about all you could say. And, uh, you just, it's just pretty awesome. And Davis wasn't the only one. Authorities report about 15 houses sustained damage with tree limbs and power lines down in this stretch off of East 130 Road. This is ground zero right here, just a major amount of damage. It had this intersection blocked. Uh, for quite a while with all these poles and, and uh, debris that was in the road. And though emergency services says the tornado was only on the ground for mere seconds, it was just enough time to leave behind this kind of damage. We had very little warning uh, and hope, I mean, uh, the way it worked out, no harm was done to people, but a lot of property damage here. Morgan reports that thankfully no one was injured and that first responders like Wyandot Fire Department were on hand 20 minutes after the storm to help pick up the pieces. Basically just taking assessment of damage of houses, um, helping people get at least tarps over their roofs to where they don't have any more rain damage than what they've already sustained. As for Davis, he says he's thankful for the help from first responders like Turner. Just doing everything they can to kind of get things back to where we can do something. You know, there's just so much to do, you don't know where to start. Davis says that the shop is insured and that they will begin the process of rebuilding. Debris, flashing lights, and the apprehension of a suspect wanted for homicide. This is how an attempted bank robbery ended in Ottawa County, Oklahoma on Wednesday. Well, it was uh, a little shot. We don't get... Uh... A lot, a lot of bank robberies. Miami PD say it all started sometime after 10 a.m. when Francis Harry Dishman walked into this IBC bank in Miami and asked for money. Police say Dishman likely got scared and left the scene driving north on Highway 69 with no money in hand. There was no weapon uh, brandished at all. He uh, handed the teller a, a note. It was here on Highway 69 between Baxter Springs and Quapaw where authorities say Dishman ran a semi truck and a second vehicle off of the highway while trying to escape at speeds of 100 miles per hour. The driver of the semi truck was killed. Well, our first response is, and you know, since this actually someone lost their life in this, we're going, you know, it doesn't. We're going to try to uh, set up a perimeter and uh, you know, get the suspect apprehended. According to Oklahoma Highway Patrol, the suspect ran from his vehicle just behind me only about 100 yards down this ditch. He was able to cover himself in brush and hide from police for two hours. There was an overbrush and he was uh, covered up in that. And 
we had to call for the assistance of the uh, Oklahoma Highway Patrol uh, airplane, and they were able to spot uh, spotted from the air. Hidden, but not for long. A police found and arrested Dishman around 12.20 p.m., about two hours after the whole ordeal began. In Ottawa County, Oklahoma, Liz Holiday, KOEM News. Hello and welcome. This is Fox 14 News at 9. I'm Liz Holiday. Topping the broadcast tonight, the trial has been delayed for a southwest Missouri man charged for defrauding victims of the Joplin tornado. That bear knew what he was doing. He went straight for the turkey pot. Yeah, I would do the same thing. Hey, but for now, at least it doesn't look like we're going to have a, a major problem. I've never had a white Christmas before. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it could be nice. It could. Missouri Highway Patrol confirms the body found outside Golden City, Missouri, is in fact missing 12-year-old girl Adriana Horton. This is KOM News at Noon. I'm Liz Holiday. Habitat for Humanity is beginning a new service to homeowners in need of improving the outside of their homes. Where people are in custody after a drug raid in Cherokee County, Kansas. The Jasper County Sheriff's Department is on the lookout for a Webb City man. Quick but thorough, as always, Nick Kelly, thank you very much. No problem. Neighbors say this is not the first time the bird has escaped. <laughs> That's about all the time we have here tonight. Thanks for joining us on Fox 14 and have a great Saturday night.